Hello everyone, welcome to Grow Up Level Up, an interview podcast where we talk to folks about the fun and games that helped us grow up. I'm Samson, and in this podcast, I do interviews with people and explore the childhood games, whether it's video games, tabletop games, playground games, and more, that helped them grow up and had an impact in their life. I also talk to them about the types of games and fun experiences that they choose to participate in today. The goal of this podcast is to highlight the importance that fun has in our lives and relationships, whether it's growing up, present day, or in the future. Without further ado, let's bring in our guest for this episode of Grow Up, Level Up. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Grow Up, Level Up, the podcast where we talk about the fun and games that help us grow up. Uh, My name is Samson, if it is your first time here. Uh, And today for our special guest, we're actually going to deviate a little bit from games and fun and esports, which is like a theme that we definitely do a little more than usual here. Um, But before I introduce our esteemed guest for today, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, Make sure you're followed on all our socials. I always got to plug the socials at Grow Up Level Up uh, for all the information on any updates and future episodes and our guests, um, as well as join our Discord. Did you know we have a Discord now? No, I did not know that, (laughs) (laughs) but I'll join after this. Excellent. And you can do that by clicking the description below. Uh, The Discord is just another way for me to connect with you, um, as well as have episode discussions um, on uh, each episode, maybe previews about upcoming ones. But... We're still getting it set up, but if you can, please join the Discord below and let me know what you think. All right. So for today's guest, um, if you're not watching the video, you might want to because we might <laughs> do some do some uh, visual stuff here. But uh, our guest today is a fellow community manager like myself, my full-time job, uh, who brings her expertise to creator.co. Um, she has experience working at Canadian startup train.ai. She's a content creator and one of the most incredibly hard working people I know, a uh, triple threat for sure. Um, she's also one of the strongest people I know, and uh, <laughs> we'll explain why in a sec. Um, she's an inspiration for the gym and for fitness uh, and to tell me to stop eating like garbage and make my gym time <laughs> worth it. So please welcome Mizuho. Hey guys, um, so I'm Mizu Ho. Um, I recently started as community manager at Creator.co and I've known Samson for like maybe two, three years. Maybe a while. I, or okay. a little bit longer maybe because yeah. of photography. Yeah, so I think yeah. um, a couple of years ago, also if you heard a doorbell, that was on our end, but we're going to keep <laughs> going because we play it fast and loose. Um, a couple of years ago, yeah, we used to be part of a photography group here in Vancouver mm-hmm. um, called no- Noisy Boca. Yeah. Yeah, and... They were a uh, street photography group, and that's kind of where we connected first, but we didn't really connect till years later uh, when you worked for a startup called Mm -hmm. Train.ai, and me being really into going to the gym at least, (laughs) (laughs) uh, I was like, oh, cool. I know somebody who works at this cool tech startup. Um, Maybe we can share more about what they do later, but Mm -hmm. before we get into the meat of it, um, I would love to know what did you bring to drink on the podcast today? Yeah, so I guess I wanted to stay on brand. So I have a Fairlife protein drink today, um, just because I'm a little bit short on protein. And then <laughs> water, because, you know, obviously the best drink to have. What about you? So wise. Okay, so I got water, obviously best drink. But I'm kind of a victim of my own game, because I definitely did not prep for the drink. So I quickly went into the fridge here at Launch Academy uh, and grabbed a Coke. Not even Coke Zero. It's like normal <laughs> Coke, but you know, I need the caffeine. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I'll work off the sugar later. Don't worry. <laughs> right. um, so next topic or next question I have for you mm-hmm. is uh, what are your top three games of all time? I honestly like don't play that many games now just because I feel like I just don't have the time for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think when I was growing up, Maple Story was like a huge thing for me. Like I yeah. loved playing it growing up. And then in terms of kind of more console games, I was super into GTA for some oh, reason. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. like love driving around and doing like stupid things. <laughs> and yeah, then blowing cars up. Yeah. That kind of stuff. And then last, probably Minecraft is because I love building things like in real life. So I think Minecraft has that kind of 
vibe where you can just like build whatever you want. And I thought that was really nice. fun. Yeah. Very, very wholesome choices, except for uh, GTA, but <laughs> yeah, just I guess like it could be. Ultimate like chaos, <laughs> but it's good. Yeah, a good spectrum, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I think I'll tweak this question a little bit for you. Mm -hmm. What are your top three favorite exercises of all time? Favorite exercises. It's like not my favorite right now, but it was my favorite for like the longest time. And I would say one is deadlift mm -hmm. just because I think it was my strongest lift, but also just because I just found it really fun to like kind of progress over time. Mm -hmm. um, second, this is going to be so chaotic. Um, Bulgarian split squats. I feel wow. like it's painful, but it's mm -hmm. so worth it. And I feel like that's where I saw a lot of my, a lot of my like gains come from. So definitely one of those. Mm -hmm. um, ooh. And then last... Mm, probably like lat pull down because oh, I think back is probably yeah. my favorite muscle group to work. And oh, really? Yeah, it's probably my strongest right now, I think. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So for those who are listening, uh, you have to look those up <laughs> or try them at the gym next time because all three of those are not easy. <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. I think mm -hmm. um, I agree with you with the deadlift one because I feel like I've thrown my back out like four Ooh, times doing deadlift, ouch. just just like ego lifting and yeah, and uh, definitely not where I thought I was. Mm -hmm. But then every time I like I like, hey, this is I'm retiring from this <laughs> exercise from deadlifting. But then every couple months later, I'm like, no, I can go back. And you're right, the progression is insane when you mm -hmm. do it. It's definitely the hardest to like get the form right, but when mm -hmm. you do, it's like amazing. That's true. Yeah. 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 That's one of them. Uh, it's one of those exercises you do want to get the form right because you could really like you could really injure, injure yourself. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Well, thanks for sharing your games and your uh, exercises. Um, as you can tell, if you can't already, this is going to be a, a kind of fitness related um, episode because Mizuho is incredibly fit. <laughs> <laughs> like if you look her up on Instagram, which is, sorry. I didn't. Um, Mizuho.jm. So M-I-Z-U-H-O.jm. On Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, you can tell she's like incredibly shredded and <laughs> it's honestly like super inspiring. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is going to be more of a fitness focused episode. Um, mm -hmm. So we won't dive too much into the games. But before we dive into the fitness part, I want to ask you about your day job, because while it would be nice to go to the gym for eight hours a day, I know I would mm -hmm. like to do that. <laughs> um, tell me about your job as a career, or not career, as a community manager, and how mm -hmm. did you end up in that role? Yeah, so I guess a lot of my background in terms of my work has been centered around social media, content creation, and kind of more on the marketing side of things. Mm -hmm. And then this role was kind of a mix of like my passion for content creation and that kind of stuff, but also the marketing side of things. So I love that that kind of encompassed both of those things. Um, and I just started the job like four weeks ago. So obviously still a lot more to learn, a yeah. lot more to kind of just gauge and understand a lot better. Um, but I'm enjoying it so much so far. So cool. Yeah. Um, you said you did, a, you have experience in content creation. What kind of experience do you have in that? Realm? Yeah. So I've been like the social media coordinator at a bunch of different companies and mm. being able to do, whether it be like video content or graphic design, anything along those lines. Mm. I've also done podcasts and stuff in the yeah. past as well. Nice. Um, so a lot more of like, kind of like the, what's it called? Like the audience facing kind of content for the most part. And then recently I've been doing a lot more like business to business type of content and stuff as well. Oh, okay. What's, mm -hmm. what's, uh, so I think like we all know what, um, like normal social media is like posting reels online, photos, mm -hmm. blogs, what's business to business kind of. Social yeah. Media so content? in my previous roles I've done like ones where I'm like creating briefs and um, presentations and stuff to pitch to other companies mm. that's been kind of like a bulk of my past roles as well um, and then right now as a community manager I'm also doing a lot of the partnerships with brands and kind of companies that could be a resource to our creator community so a lot of that is me pitching to specific um, companies like later or Hootsuite and things like that so yeah, I think that's yeah. been really really interesting because a lot of my past roles have been yeah just like customer facing where I'm just like posting to another audience person that's probably similar to me oh okay so instead of yeah trying to grow your niche you're kind of trying to get more people more brands to work with you mm -hmm. um, which I guess is kind of like how business usually works <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's interesting that it's in the content creation realm now or world now mm -hmm. cool um so how does your like experience with doing content creation personally factor into your job as like community manager and going B2B? Yeah. So I think because it 
Um, my company is like an influencer marketing platform. Mm -hmm. So I think my experience with doing content creation kind of for myself and my own personal brand, as well as doing content creation for businesses and working on the brand side has kind of given me the expertise of both sides. So I understand like what the creator is thinking and like what their kind of perspective is. But I also understand like where the brands are coming from and kind of what they're expecting out of everything. Mm. So I think being that kind of mediator between the brand and the influencer has been something that's been really rewarding, but also really, really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a really cool way to look at it. It's like you, you live the experience. So you know what the influencers are looking for, mm -hmm. but you're also like trained in a more corporate sense, I guess, to know what the businesses are looking for as well. Mm -hmm, and for the sure. mediator, it's cool. You're like a, <laughs> like a brand deal counselor. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Cool. Um, uh, is there any other fun like tips or tricks you want to share about your job at creator.co? Any fun realizations, fun surprises, I guess. In your I short think, time there? Mm, so I've worked in a lot more like more traditional kind of work environments in the past. So I think at this company, everyone's like super young, super like oh, casual cool. and it's such like a fun work environment. So mm. I think that's been something that's been pretty like a culture shock just because I haven't really had that experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that also plays into the fact of like why I love being in the office, even though it's kind of far for me to get to is because yeah. I, I just like love the team and love the environment. Awesome. Mm. Well, that that's an interesting thing. Like we were talking before uh, we hit mm -hmm. record today we're like oh going to the office is kind of nice and like yeah. in a world where hybrid and like we is both normal. live far from downtown yeah, yeah 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 we're both based out of downtown vancouver <laughs> uh but we both live like maybe an hour away <laughs> yeah like i take a sea bus which is literally like a, a ferry on the water yeah <laughs> <So> like, <laughs> you have to cross a body of water to get yeah, to work that's literally. crazy um but yeah it's it's different in person for sure mm -hmm. um especially on like hot hot days like this it's nice to yes. have ac 100%. um and uh yeah like lots of people like to work from home and it's like oh we can do the same job but there's something different about being in person for sure mm -hmm. maybe we're both just kind of more extroverted people <laughs> yeah i definitely like i just like love chatting and like talking kind of like in that environment yeah cool yeah. good to good uh thanks for sharing uh, good to know i do know <laughs> um okay so let's talk in Let's talk about um, your fitness journey and mm -hmm. kind of why you've latched your not only personal brand, but your genuine interests to like going to the gym, mm -hmm. uh, building muscle. Um, can I say bodybuilding or not really? I, I always say I used to always call myself a powerlifter, but honestly, yeah. based on like my training style and kind of how I look now, I think it's more of like a mix of powerlifting, bodybuilding. So like cool. power building, I guess. Power building. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to call myself a bodybuilder just yet, but yeah. we'll see. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like this. Really, it's like little niches because they all kind mm -hmm. of flow into each other. Yeah. Um, I know for me, like when I first started going to the gym, it was like, okay, I got to, cause I grew up kind of like overweight. It was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I just got to not be at that stage again. But then the more I did it, the more I really genuinely liked it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wouldn't call myself a bodybuilder either, but I'm definitely like chasing that high score of how much you can lift and mm -hmm. like chasing that number. Like I in, would say like that's the more rewarding side of powerlifting is that it's mm -hmm. a very tangible number versus mm -hmm. like bodybuilding. I feel like to an extent it's very subjective because it's based on like your aesthetic and how you look. Um, but obviously both both of them you can like ch chase numbers. But I think it's like to me it was like more rewarding to chase like a specific like one rep max, you know. Mm, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we can um, we can expand on that a little bit for the audience that is not so well versed. So bodybuilding is more um, – like you're building for the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. oh, it's sorry. I'll get it. I don't think that picked up. Uh, you're like building to look like very big and like it's it's the ones you see on TV where they have like tan skin, lots of like little ripply muscles and like veins. Yeah, and veins. And, yeah, and they're flexing and like they look <laughs> big. So you're building your body to be bigger or more shapely, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, where and you cut down to like a very like low fat percentage which is not the healthiest to maintain but it's like yeah. for a short period of time yeah yeah, yeah that, that's actually one thing too is like um th the times you see those folks on tv with the like super shredded like they're only like that for maybe a day yeah even, um because they dehydrate themselves and don't eat to lose as much fat as possible so they're mm -hmm. like veins and their <laughs> muscles yeah. show uh just for the show really and mm -hmm. then after that they kind of go back to normal or whatever to maintain their mass 
But for uh, powerlifting, do you want to explain maybe what powerlifting is to you? Yeah. So to me, I guess it was more so centered kind of around the squat, bench and deadlift, obviously. So like the three main compounds. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's not necessarily, it doesn't really necessarily matter like how you look, but it's more so about if you can hit certain numbers based on like your body weight. So you're kind of divided um, within like specific like body weight classes. And then from there, um, like whatever number that you get, you're competing against other people that are the same like class as you. Right. Yeah. So it's like if you're a 200 pound person, maybe your goal is to lift uh, 1.5 your body weight. So 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you're also comparing yourself to other 200 pounded people, not necessarily trying to look the biggest or the like the leanest or anything like that. It's just pure like numbers and like your results as a whole chasing the high score Mm -hmm. yeah cool um so for you how did you start going to the gym yeah so I guess like back in high school I played a lot of like competitive sports and Mm. I guess like when you're in school I feel like you're being told like when to go to practice when to go to a game and like there's not really a a lot of planning kind of on your end Mm -hmm. but when I quit the sports at the end of high school and went into university I realized that now like everything is in your hands and in your first year, a lot of people call it the freshman 15. Like a lot of people gain weight <laughs> in their first year of university. Yeah. And for me, I realized that now I need to take my own like physical and mental health kind of into my own hands. And no one's going to be telling me to like go for a run or to work out or anything like that or like what to eat. Mm-hmm. So that's when I kind of took started taking fitness a little bit more seriously. And then I think probably kind of during COVID is when I really, really started getting even deeper into it. So whether it be like um, calorie and like macro tracking as well as just like progressive overload and kind of following a specific program. So that's when I kind of saw a lot more progress and then kind of got to like where I am right now Mm. versus like previously it was more so I was just like working out to work out and to like stay active. Yeah, I totally resonate with that story because like, yeah, similar, like once I graduated, I didn't have football practice anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I was like, okay, I guess I got to work out. And at the time, like my friends went, so I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll just go as a way to hang out. Mm -hmm. But then it was during um, COVID when there wasn't like any gyms open um, and we had like home gyms, which worked for some people, but (laughs) then (laughs) home gym was not the vibe. I bought like um, adjustable dumbbells and like a couple like resistance bands and stuff. It just did nothing. Um, I tried to get into running also didn't work. (laughs) Um, I hated every single second of it. And then on top of that, I lost like maybe like 10 pounds of like just muscle mass just because I was like doing hit and like cardio. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really doing anything that was like strength training. And then as a result, I just like lost a bunch of weight without Mm -hmm. wanting to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, like, um, yeah, I got the adjustable dumbbell. I got the... I don't think I got resistant, but I got a yoga mat, but <laughs> yoga mat texture like freaks me out. <laughs> so that's also a reason why I don't like a workout. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that it, it just wasn't the same when you're at the gym where it's like everyone else is also working out. Mm-hmm. Um, you're there for one purpose. And then th- that just helps your mental. Like for me, that helped my mental so much to like work out harder um, and actually train compared to like, oh, I'm exercising to not like gain weight. Mm-hmm, for yeah. sure. Um, so, uh, what challenges have you faced like during your fitness journey? Um, I guess kind of like the first thing would be eating enough. So for the Mm. longest time, like prior to me actually counting how much like calories I eat in a day, I realized that I was eating on average around like 1100 calories a day, Wow, which is absolutely not enough for any like adult human being. (laughs) Um, but I think at some point because I was eating such low calories, my body kind of adjusted its metabolism to kind of reach that as like a maintenance rate. Mm -hmm. So even if I was working out five, six days a week, I like didn't see any progress. Like I didn't look any better. I didn't really like gain any lean body mass either. Mm. And I just like thought that if I have um, kind of like training kind of t- tuned in, I thought that everything else would kind of fall into place, but it just like didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when I realized that I just like wasn't eating enough. And I think it can be kind of scary to bulk, especially if you used to be like a smaller person. So I think over time I got more comfortable with eating more. And now I eat around like 1800 calories, nice. which doesn't seem like a lot, I yeah. know. <laughs> but to me, it's like a very big win. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I was always so scared of like gaining weight. Mm-hmm. And then now it's like, like last year I was probably at the heaviest I'd ever been, but I also looked the best I had ever looked. So it's like one of those things where weight honestly doesn't mean anything in terms of fitness because at the end of the day, like muscle is going to be way heavier than fat. 
Um, so I think now it's like, rather than just watching like my weight, I'm like looking at how my body like literally physically looks and mm. like my numbers in terms of like my lifts as a whole. Wow. That's, that's, I think like a, um, a thing that's not talked about as much is like what you eat also matters when you want to get fit or, or you want to like gain muscle and, and improve on your fitness journey. Cause like, mm-hmm. yeah, 1100 is not a lot. I think like, <laughs> what's the trend? Like 1400 is enough for people yeah. to like lose weight, but 1100 yeah. is And is it's not crazy enough. because I wasn't losing weight. I was like maintaining weight at that calorie oh, wow. count. So that's like absolutely ridiculous. And then the second <laughs> thing is like protein counts. So like mm. if I didn't think about it, I would eat maybe 60 grams a day. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like constantly like working towards eating more proteins. Now I'm at like 120 to 140 grams a day. Dang. That's really good. (laughs) Uh, For me, like I definitely need to eat better. (laughs) So like eating, you said you're like a very light eater. I'm like not a light eater. (laughs) I I eat eat like small amounts at a time, but I get hungry every like two hours. That's like the kind of the caveat, I guess. But Mm -hmm. interesting for, yeah, for me, I like, I can just eat nonstop until I'm like sick and full, (laughs) which is not good because I end up eating a lot of junk. But it's also better if like that means bulking is going to be easier for you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for me like cutting is super easy but bulking is like impossible like hey. it took me like like almost like eight nine months to just gain like five pounds wow and mm-hmm. yeah that's like still not enough so we need to trade metabolisms or or yeah. or, or, or what, appetites appetites yeah, yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> i need to uh not eat so much but yeah, yeah actually that's true like gaining muscle has never been hard for me and i definitely like plateaued for a long time mm-hmm. um But I remember initially, like, I was going from, like, the bar to two plates in, like, less than a year. Um, Mm -hmm. Actually, personal journey. I was deadlifting 225 this time last year, and I just hit 300 last week. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's from eating too much. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, yeah, it's it's, – lots of people say, like, if you want to lose weight or whatever – go to the gym. But really, it's about your diet, too. Like, 51% Mm -hmm. is your diet and – yeah. Or, or, or and more. like high protein diets will like make it a lot easier to lose fat, but also to gain muscle as a whole too. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to highlight one more thing you said was that like the, the weight number doesn't matter at a certain point. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah, fat or not, sorry, muscle is more dense than fat. So you'll always be heavier, even though you're like, maybe you look leaner or you're uh, stronger. So at a certain point, yeah, it's like, don't worry about the, the number on the scale because mm-hmm. yeah, you're like, fit or in a different way yeah um sure. yeah any other tips and tricks you've learned along the way in your journey um i think like tracking oh actually no this is gonna be related to like working out train fitness so oh okay like, oh c- can i give a little bit of context about what train is yeah um and maybe you can chime in as well mm-hmm. so train.ai uh, or train fitness. AI fitness train fitness AI yeah okay <laughs> train fitness AI was a startup that uh, started here in Vancouver they moved to Toronto now but it was an app on your phone and your Apple watch that tracked your uh, workout movements as you worked out so that you don't need to count your reps so for example if I'm like bench pressing um, I can do the bench press and count in my head and then the app on your watch which is running will count that many reps and add it to like your tracker so it was a way to track your routines as well as it did it like automatically Mm -hmm. without you having to enter any numbers in. And like where the AI comes in is based on like the way that your wrist moves, it detects like what exercise it is. So for me, like I can't count reps for the life of me. (laughs) And two is I hate writing down every single thing that I do. So one thing I will say is that like um, filming like content for train fitness is when I first started doing like content creation for myself. Mm. And as cringy as it is and how (laughs) like however awkward it is at the end of the day now I can actually see like the progress that I've seen in like the past two three years versus before I was like so embarrassed of taking photos so I just like never did it but now I'm looking back and I'm like the transformation would have been so much cooler had I like taken photos like five six years ago you know so so um a little bit more contact. Mizuho used to do content creation for Train Fitness AI. You mm-hmm. were what position were you there? I was also. Canadian. I was just like more of like a social media coordinator. Social yeah. media coordinator, and then um, yeah. Do you see like yourself because you weren't there or, or you left Train Fitness not too long ago? But do you see like a difference from there till now? Yeah, a hundred percent. So this past year is especially when I really honed in on eating more and eating more protein as a whole. Mm-hmm. So I think I've like kind of gone through like a 
phase of like body recomposition because mm-hmm. I weigh like around the same as last year, except I just like look a lot more different. Oh, cool. So that's been like really, really interesting to see because I just like didn't see that progress for so long. So yeah. That's awesome. Congrats. Mm-hmm. Um, one question that people get for like the gym is like, oh, I don't have motivation to go. Like um, you can go to the gym or they can like stay at home and catch up on the Netflix show or stuff. <laughs> but I guess uh, what's your like motivation for the gym? How do you get motivated to get up and go to, I'm assuming like a different building to, to work out? Um, I think fitness as a whole isn't necessarily motivation like motivation is so fleeting and you have these like little spurts of like being motivated Mm. but it all kind of boils down to like discipline right so it's like the more it's ingrained in your like habits and your daily routine the more it's like an absolute must that you go it's not even like a question of like whether or not you feel like going Mm -hmm. and like that's kind of like the habit building that I've done over the past couple years but at the end of the day, like no, no one person is like motivated every single day. Like there's definitely days where I get home from work and I'm like, I absolutely do not want to go like work out right <laughs> yeah, now because I'm yeah. like so exhausted. Yeah. But I also know that A, like any workout is better than no workout. Yeah. And two is like, I just know that I will feel a lot more like energized and happy if I do a workout, even mm-hmm. if I feel like not that great. So motivation, like if we're, if you're relying on motivation, I don't think it's going to be something that you're going to stick to. But if mm. you're just like ingraining it as a habit i think that's where you see that kind of progress and being able to stick with it for the long term Hmm, okay um by by like a habit you mean like just something that you force yourself to do or or kind of do it enough that it becomes (laughs) wrong to not do it (laughs) so i think tricky question it's like known that it it takes like 21 days to like form a habit so if you do it 21 days like consistently then it becomes kind of ingrained in your daily routine and you don't really think about it anymore so it's not like you're forcing yourself to go, but I think the first 21 days is like the hardest. And then mm. once you kind of surpass that point is when it becomes like second nature to go. And like, you're not really thinking, oh, like, should I or should I not go? Like you wake up and you're like, okay, now it's time to go to the gym. Yeah, that's such a, that yeah, the 21 days thing is um, scientifically proven more or less mm-hmm. um, that it's how you build habits, good or bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, first 21 days are the hardest. And then mm-hmm. uh, after that should be easier. But um 21 days, not that long, less than a month. Yeah. I think people Very tend quick. to forget that. Yeah. Uh, three weekends. Um, so any motivation for those that are looking to make a health focused change? Um, I guess to kind of go back to the earlier question of like, oh, mm-hmm. like I don't have time for the gym kind of thing. Um, I think at the end of the day, people's priorities are like the key thing. So when you say that you don't have time for something, it's usually because you're not putting that as a priority. Mm. So for me, it's like, obviously, like I have a lot of stuff going on with work and like all my either kind of like side gigs and projects that I have going on. So it's not like I have like a a ton of like free time in my day to day, but it's more so fitness is one of those things that I put as one of my top priorities and I make other sacrifices. So whether it be like if I'm waking up early in the morning before work to go gym, then I'm like sleeping early the night before. Or like Mm -hmm. if I'm going to work out after work, then I'm probably not going to make plans after work that day. So it's all about kind of trade-offs. And like if you aren't able to make that a priority and to have that trade-off, then you're never going to be able to like accomplish it, you know? That's true. It's it's, uh, weighing your priorities. Mm -hmm. I think you said that. Yeah. Um, And then if it's something that really matters to you, you would do it. Mm -hmm. Um, So... And we all like have the same 24 hours in a day. Yeah. So it's like, if I can do it, I'm sure everyone can do it. Yeah, yeah. It's just more so like how you choose to like spend your time basically. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, um, that's something that lots of people um, not get hung up on, but mm-hmm. they say, oh, I don't have time for this. Um, I'm going through this, so I can't do that. But um, really it's time management for one. Mm-hmm. And also, um, yeah, it's like your priorities. If you really prior- prioritize this, you would put mm-hmm. it higher on the list and it's like you want you should be like valuing your physical and your mental health I think as like a top priority out Mm. of like all things and fitness is such a small thing that you can like slowly incorporate so I think like one other thing is that people kind of jump in immediately and do like a two-hour workout Mm. that's like obviously not the most sustainable Mm. so I think starting with like even like 15 20 minutes in the morning or like something just small and quick and then gradually kind of building up to that I think would be like the best way to get started so that you're not just like overwhelmed with like 
a two hour workout, you get home and it's like 10 p.m. and it's like, okay, well, now it's like time to sleep. Like, that's not really yeah, like, the most sustainable like, way. My evening's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, 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 that's a really good point you bring up is like when you start, you don't have to do like deep dive into it. Yeah. You don't have to do 300 pound deadlifts or <laughs> <laughs> um, like you can start with those 15 minute walks or runs and then build, mm-hmm. build up to whatever you want to build up to. Yeah. Um, but the important thing is that you do it mm-hmm. and are consistent with it. Yeah, sure. cool. Um, I want to transition from fitness into content creation here because it's actually kind of related. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, what kind of uh, like content do you enjoy making for your personal Instagram pages, uh, TikTok? Um, I think that those are the two you're most active on, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess when I first started TikTok last year, um, I literally just posted like fitness content Mm -hmm. and it did relatively well. But now the issue is that majority of my audience is just fitness based. Mm -hmm. So anytime I post like a lifestyle kind of content, it does not do very well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, And then on the other hand, like my Instagram is more of my lifestyle because obviously I have a lot of my friends on there. And then I also just post more day to day things. Mm -hmm. And so kind of like the mix of the content that I make is like lifestyle and fitness. Okay. So lifestyle could be anything from like food, um, just like hangouts like with friends or just like my day to day versus um, fitness is obviously like me working out or some sort of like gym TikTok trend. Yeah. I don't know, something along <laughs> those lines. Um, and I think with that, it's kind of like a mix of the two. And those are both things that I like enjoy filming and enjoy t- creating that content for. So that's why I've kind of stuck stuck with those. But I do wish I could stray a little bit away from fitness content just because oh. I feel like I don't want it to be like my whole entire like identity, yeah. I think, as a whole. But. Your your brand, I think, is what some people call it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, yeah. So like lifestyle content would be like, for example, like my uh, outfits for the week or my lunch yeah. for the week. And then fitness would be um, like maybe some progress pictures or um yeah, like trends, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, what other kind of content are you desiring to go into? I've been like doing a little bit more like vlog style content, but I think it's a little bit harder because it's like, what is the buy-in from like an audience person mm. to mm-hmm. want to like know about like what you did today? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, versus like if you're doing like a story time, then it's like people are invested in the story. But if it's like just your day to day, I think it's harder to get that like buy-in from like an audience. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been kind of tweaking like how I do those things and it's definitely something I want to like delve a little bit deeper into. Cool. Um, yeah. And then I think just the lifestyle stuff that I've been doing recently have all been kind of centered around like a specific thing that I did. So recently I did like a ring making class and that was like a really fun one and that actually did really well on Instagram. And I think those are the ones where it's like you're providing some sort of value to like your audience that's watching. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, um, something that, um, definitely is done more now is like what's the value you're giving your audience Mm -hmm. um whether it's a ring making class or like even your vlog like what's the value you're giving them because um from what it sounds like you you're not doing this content just to post online you're also trying to build your audience and and grow or else why would you do all this like hard work for nothing (laughs) um yeah so like uh finding that value or framing it as value to give to your audience is kind of a really tricky challenge right Mm -hmm, yeah for sure and I think because I started with just the fitness content to kind Mm -hmm. of pivot away from that and try and figure out like what my over-encompassing kind of personal brand is was something that I definitely struggled with just because anytime I posted something that wasn't fitness related just like didn't perform well so Mm -hmm. now I'm kind of shifting towards like a mix of the two and it's like definitely like the balance that I I struck right now I think is something that I'm like pretty happy with cool mm-hmm. so so you you got them in with the fitness content now it's like ha, you guys are actually in for me <laughs> um is that the overall end goal with your um your content creation social media journey or are you just kind of seeing where it goes and seeing where you can grow I like definitely want to grow it um larger obviously so Mm -hmm. I do want to kind of see if I can get some like brand deals and things like that so that's why I think my current role at creator.co is so interesting because Mm -hmm. I am like seeing these like creators work with brands on specific like campaigns and I think seeing that like interaction makes me understand a little bit more like what brands are looking for but also being able to like cold like do like a cold pitch to like a brand or something along those lines and I think that will be like a super, super useful tool for me moving forward to kind of grow my personal brand, but also work with the businesses that I actually want to work with. Cool. So you're like getting a little bit of a um, 
not secret training, but you're getting a little bit of practice <laughs> for when you want to, when yeah. you want to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, would you say like a lot of, um, uh, content creation is like pretty relationship based? Cause the way I see it is like, um, when you post something for your followers, they start to build a relationship with you. I'd, like not necessarily parasocial because mm -hmm. there are times where it's like, oh, the creator genuinely does care about their audience. Mm -hmm. But um, for you, like, is there, um, do you th ever think about that when you're making content? Or yeah, I mean, I think specifically with like the fitness content, I wanted to create like content that was relatable. Um, obviously, there's a lot more men in kind of like the fitness space uh, rather yeah. than women. And mm -hmm. I think the other thing is that I grew up as a, obviously an Asian Canadian and I had Asian parents that were like super against me gaining any muscle, getting like bigger. Yeah. They just yeah. wanted me to be like super feminine, petite and like as skinny as possible. Mm -hmm. And being able to kind of share my struggles with that, but also my parents gradually understanding that like, this is just like how I want to look and that that can be seen as beautiful as well as mm -hmm. something that I've struggled with and have like kind of moved past. And I wanted to like kind of share that experience and kind of grow that community within um, like the fitness space. Yeah, it's very honorable of you. It's uh, it's definitely not a um, easy easy ask to be this mm -hmm. like front runner for this uh, of this story, but it is a common story of like yeah. uh, Asian women who want to go into fitness but are afraid of what other people might think of them mm -hmm. looking like. Um, I don't want to use the word bulky, looking bigger yeah yeah or like more masculine or something along yeah. those lines um and also asian parents can be pretty savage they comment <laughs> on your weight or your looks quite often yeah. Yeah, um yeah. and that's like helped me learn to like grow thick skin but also for them to gradually like over time they've like understood that um as long as i'm healthy like they should be happy with it and mm -hmm. they are so i think they've grown a lot more like understanding of it as a whole yeah and even like during COVID, like my dad actually sent me like a photo of like a workout bench at Costco. And oh. he was just like, hey, like, do you want this for the house? And I was just like, <laughs> this is his like way of showing me that he's like accepted That's my awesome. like fitness journey and kind of like what I'm aiming for, I think. Cool. So that That's was great. Awesome. Yeah. Did, did you get that bench then? I did not. Because I was like, <laughs> do I really need a bench at home? Because I bench didn't see myself intense, doing yeah. like a home workout all the time. It's just like not uh, yeah. something I want to do. Yeah. First the yeah. bench and then next you're going to get a bar and a deadlift platform. and it's Yeah. <laughs> it's like if I can't get a squat rack, I feel like it's pointless. Yeah. yeah so yeah. and like there's just like no space at my house. So <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. But yeah, that's awesome. That's that's a really uh, great story to share. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so Let's mix them all together. So you have content creation, mm -hmm. uh, managing social media, and going to the gym. Um, how do you feel you like ended up in this kind of mix of three different things? Yeah. So I think um, for me, work-life balance is obviously something that's super, super important. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, because of just how I think am as a person I love being passionate about my work and I don't like working just to work you know oh, okay yeah so for me it's like when I've done jobs in the past where I'm just like working just to work and to like make make means yeah um I just like didn't enjoy it because I like wasn't passionate about the work that I was doing I didn't really enjoy like my day-to-day -day. Mm -hmm. so that was like mentally draining for me just because it wasn't something enjoyable versus now I think I've like put that kind of passion as like a priority so mm -hmm. this role specifically in this job I think has like struck that kind of passion kind of for me but also like fitness is something that I also like heavily like want to incorporate in my day-to-day -day. and content creation is just one of those things where it like makes me happy as a whole I think but also it's like helped me um connect with so many different people kind of in Vancouver or just in general mm -hmm. and it's been really really rewarding to be able to network with like all these amazing like other creators and things like that yeah, and like yeah. yourself included <laughs> yeah we met so, over Instagram more or less yeah yeah so I think it's been really interesting because I've gotten so much like insight and just like amazing like knowledge and like advice from so many different people and I think mm -hmm. that's been like the most rewarding thing doing content creation cool and um yeah how did you it, I've I definitely resonate with um, what you said. Like you have to be passionate about it. So you end mm -hmm. up mixing everything together because yeah. honestly. It like, all kind of like bleeds into each other in terms of my work as yeah. well. So yeah. Well, yeah. Like I definitely resonate with that because like this whole podcast idea was a blend of all my interests of like psychology and growing up and making podcasts and making <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you like getting into 
nerdy stuff. How do you balance all these things between each other? Like you, you said they do blend into each other, but there has to be a time for gym. There has to be a time for work has to be a time to like sit and edit. Like how do you balance that in your day to day? Yeah. So with fitness, I think it's like probably the part that takes up all like a huge chunk of my day other than work. Mm -hmm. So right now, like I work nine to five in office most days and then I do a work from home day once a week. Um, With that, it's been, I think the first week was like the hardest because I was getting back into the routine of working in person because my previous job was fully remote. Mm -hmm. So I think getting home at like six, six thirty and then trying (laughs) to get yourself to the gym without eating yeah it's actually like the roughest thing and the first (laughs) week it was definitely like a learning curve of like trying to get back into that routine and then now it's like I've it's become like so ingrained that it's like not too big of an issue now so that's good um but I think some days like if I can I'll try and gym beforehand so that I can just get home and relax like for the evening instead of going to the gym for two hours coming back cooking dinner and then like sleeping yeah it's just like not the best because I don't have any like time to like relax or do anything Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and content creation I definitely like slacked off for like the first like two weeks of work just because right. I was like really really transition busy. Like, period you're, yeah, just you're like learning so many new out. things and like there's just so much um information to kind of take in mm-hmm. and then now I think I've like kind of settled settled in like a little bit better so now um fitness is kind of back on track and then content creation I've been kind of posting maybe like four times a week mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and uh you're posting on Instagram and TikTok at what name Oh, <laughs> at um, M-I-Z-U-H-O dot J-M. Cool. Awesome. Yes. And we'll, we'll make sure to link it below and plug it again at the end. I just want to mm-hmm. make sure people get uh, like get your followers and can support <laughs> you and see all the hard work that you're doing. So that's awesome. Um, I guess uh, as we get to the end of our interview, um, I have two questions to ask you. One of them is kind of fun. Um so what is your like uh, two pieces of wisdom for the world, one fitness related and mm-hmm. one not fitness related? You can pick which one to start with. I think fitness related. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the big things that I didn't do kind of at the start was to be a part of like the gym community. Oh, okay. So I used to go to the gym and like literally not talk to anyone and then just leave. Like that was it. <laughs> like I li- literally just so zoned in that I just like yeah. resting bitch face, like just didn't talk to anyone. <laughs> and then I think like after COVID kind of let up and we were back in the gym is when I first started talking to people at my gym and people are so friendly, especially nice. at like my gym and it's where I've made like a lot of my really, really close friends now. So like talk to people at the gym, Mm -hmm. like honestly having that community makes it so much less scary and like daunting to be in the gym and like lifting heavy. Mm -hmm. And especially like if you have friends that are more experienced, you can ask for advice and like form tips and like just having them maybe spot you and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like all the scary parts of the gym will instantly go away if you like find that community. And I think that's super important. Um, In terms of life, I think, work-life balance is like the key thing like I think obviously like work is really really important especially if it's something that you're passionate about but finding that line between work and life is like incredibly important and I think it got blurred a lot for like people during COVID especially Mm -hmm. so one thing is that just like have like time blocks or something along those lines where you know that at this specific time like you're done with work you're going to turn your computer off and then go out and do something else Mm. and like having that divide has been something that's super important and then time management also is kind of kind of incorporated in that but being able to kind of balance everything that you prioritize so like obviously spending time with friends is something that's super important to me so I always try and incorporate that into like my week so maybe on my rest day I go out and like hang out with a friend today is also a rest day so here I am we're not Um, going to the gym after this (laughs) (laughs) yeah so just like finding little pockets of time like during the day to do the things that you want to prioritize is something mm-hmm. that's super important and that's literally the only reason I, why I'm like still sane and like functioning human <laughs> being. Yeah. If I didn't do that, I would literally be sleeping like two hours a day. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> just gym and work. <laughs> yeah, and literally just that. Everything in one day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm hearing two things. Like one is like uh, manage your time well and part of doing that is setting boundaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only for yourself, but for like... Um, like other parts of your life as well. Like, okay, Mm -hmm. now is like set the boundary. We don't work right now. Now is time for myself or like the other way works as well, where it's like, okay, now we got to 
but what, what did the kids say? You got to lock in <laughs> and get, get your work done. Um, and then the other thing is uh, kind of seek out that gym community or well, for you, um, seeking out a gym community worked really well. Mm-hmm. Um, not only did it like make you feel more belong, but it helped with your progress. Um, it helped with uh, learning more things and uh, like that motivation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it made me so much more confident in the gym where I wasn't looking like a scared little cat, like Aww. walking around the gym. <laughs> And then also like filming content and stuff too. I think that takes a lot of guts. And at first yeah. I would like hide my phone in my bag so that like no one could see. And then now I just like pull out this like mini tripod oh my to goodness. like <laughs> film my content. And I just like don't really care about what other people yeah. think anymore. So I think that's super important because I think one of the big things with the people who can't stick with the gym is that it's it's scary. Like mm-hmm. you don't really know what you're doing. You don't really know mm-hmm. like how to do everything. And I think finding a person that can help you with that is like the key thing for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, um, everyone at the gym is super friendly. Um, and, uh, for us, like we definitely try to be friendly to Mm -hmm. new folks as well, or whoever's asking for a lift or to borrow something. So I think like, even though people look very big and strong, like mostly everybody's there for the same goal of just trying to make themselves better, Mm -hmm. uh, fitness wise. Uh, so everyone's also in like a good mood, um, and that as well. Um, can't say everybody there are the bad cases <laughs> yeah but i think like the biggest scariest guys like in my gym yeah. are like the friendliest people ever that's awesome it's just that they look a little bit terrifying <laughs> <laughs> yeah if only there's a way they can look less terrifying i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but they're also like the gym veterans you know like they know what they're true. doing like they'll give you the advice and i think that's like awesome true yeah you don't get that scary looking mm-hmm. uh, unless you're there for a long time and if you're there for a long yeah. time you probably like being there <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great, those are two great, really great tips. Thanks for sharing. Mm-hmm. Um, and my last question for you for tonight, uh, it's a fun one, but um, what would like your dream gym be like um, culture wise and also maybe like what machines and exercises you can do in there? Yeah. So I've always like wanted to build like a home, like a proper home gym at some point. Like if I move out and like live in a big house or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And I kind of want to start like my own gym, like a oh, business in the future. Cool. Yeah. As kind of like a side investment kind of thing. Um, I'm very picky with gym equipment and I'm like a very short person. So mm-hmm. it used to be like gym equipment that is like short person friendly. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So many gym at, <laughs> like gym equipment like at yeah. my at my gym, they're just like not for my height and it just like mm-hmm. doesn't work. Um, so I think like absolute musts are probably like a, like squat rack, deadlift platform, Mm -hmm. um, cable machines, a bench, um, dumbbells for sure. And then, yeah, I think those are like the main like essentials. Sorry. I'm like, my stomach is like, yeah, (laughs) it's okay. I think we're good. It's, Um, it's getting, we got to get that protein in. Yeah. I was was like, I should drink this like beforehand. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then. Arsenal equipment is probably like my favorite kind of gym oh. equipment brand. What's, um, oh, it's a brand, Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And like their their stuff is like super like ergonomic and they're just like, you just feel everything. Like the muscle, mm. mind-to-muscle connection on it is like absolutely amazing. Nice. So I would highly recommend that one. Um, definitely like the most, one of the most expensive brands, I think. So it would be a very expensive like gym to build. The, the budget is unlimited. I, yes. I think my usual question for this is like, if I had a million dollars and you can make your game. So if I gave you a million dollar yeah, budget, I would just so like we're good. buy awesome. everything like top of the line, like yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. Yeah. Just like um, the bare basics, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's the, uh, it, it's almost like a kitchen, right? Like you don't want to buy something that you can only use for one purpose. You want to mm-hmm. make sure that it can be used for multiple purposes. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Can I add a, smoothie bar to your to your gym <laughs> so actually i forgot to mention this so yeah, i yeah. want to add a smoothie bar but i also <laughs> want like a chipotle type like takeout oh. lunch place and then everything else like in the menu like whatever you order is already weighed out for the macros calories and everything oh, cool. and then you could scan it on like my fitness pal or whatever <laughs> and then be able to like just add it to your calories i think that would be like okay. amazing that's like yeah. kind of genius <laughs> um and it's gonna be like tailored to the individual like yes. what so are it's your like goals you, pick, you build your own bowl kind of thing yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. i think you have something there <laughs> yeah i think it would be awesome um cool well Mizuho, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, podcast called Grow Up, Level Up, a podcast where we talk about 
fun and games and hobbies, I guess, that we partake in today as uh, grown adults. <laughs> um, if you liked what you heard, please consider leaving a comment. Uh, if you're listening on podcasts, please leave a rating on all the podcast services on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, I would like to thank Launch Academy for uh, hosting us uh, this podcast today. If you're listening, uh, that's why the audio is so good. If you're watching, <laughs> that's why we got like cool lights yeah. and a. This is like the most like official podcast that I've been on so <laughs> far because it's either been like Zoom yeah. or like some random like office meeting room. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm very honored. <laughs> um, yeah. At Launch Academy, we're not necessarily a media company, but we have a media room to record podcasts like these. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check out some of Launch's other podcasts, actually. We have one called Launch AMA and one called Founder Journey. Um, but Launch is a tech accelerator here in Vancouver. If you're a tech startup, we'd love to work with you. Um, so check us out at launchacademy.ca. Um, as well as subscribe to Grow Up, Level Up on all the socials. Uh, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can also follow me at Samson XP on all the socials. Uh, Mizuho, where can people find you? Um, on TikTok and Instagram, um, Mizuho.jm. That, and that's spelled M-I-Z-U-H-O.jm. Awesome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. And it has been a pleasure to chat with you, Mizuho, for the first time. <laughs> yeah, thanks after, for like, having so many me. Years. Yeah. Uh, audience, talk to you later. Oh, and don't forget to eat your protein.